Okay, good afternoon everyone and welcome to this live event, Securing the New Way of Working. Today we have some speakers who will share the lessons they learned in 2020 and how you can improve your IT strategy for 2021. To kick off this event, we have Remco de Kramer from Microsoft. He's the product marketing manager uh, for Microsoft Netherlands, and he will introduce himself and I will give him the word now. So thank you, Remco, and please share your screen. Okay, thank you very much. So I was on mute, which is also the sentence of the year, I understand. Um, but uh, thank you uh, for inviting me uh, to present here. My name is uh, Remco de Kramer and I'm a product marketing manager uh, Monowork for Microsoft. Um, so um, today I'll um, uh, explain to you about securing identity and endpoints for remote work. Uh, this became very relevant uh, because of course we've seen a large surge in um, uh, uh, Microsoft Teams usage. So the daily active usage in the Netherlands was 3 million um, last month and currently this is on the rise again. So we're working from home uh, in great masses. Uh, I hope this will, uh, this will get less, uh, but even after it will get less uh, when we uh, uh, do return back to normal. Um, hybrid working will continue to exist uh, because two thirds uh, of managers expect that their employees will continue to work from home uh, for two days a week or more. Um, so with this COVID-19 situation and shifting uh, to uh, working from home brings large challenges and these challenges are here to stay. But now that we have uh, this crisis situation under control, um, we need to take the next step. Um, and uh, we need uh, uh, to look how at how we can um, 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 configure our IT environments uh, so that it matches our IT uh, policy. So are remote workplaces safe? Uh, and do employees have access to all the applications they need? Um, and um, how is uh, the network configured? because previously everything was done within the corporate network and we we're protected within a firewall. And this was the uh, protection perimeter. But now that we work from home, from the cloud, um, the network is no longer the prim primary point of defense. It is the identity. So how do we take care of securing the identity uh, and have we safeguarded privacy and compliance? And can IT administer endpoints from a distance? So these are all questions we have to ask ourselves um, and see if they, um, if we have enabled uh, the workplace uh, according to these questions. And also what we need to take in account is that uh, the number of phishing, uh, hacks, uh, attempts and malware have risen exponentially. Uh, so criminality has also moved to online. So now it's more important uh, than ever to take care of this. So there are three steps we've seen which are very important uh, to secure the remote workplace. First, uh, is to enable remote access to applications and all types of applications. And I'll explain to that. Uh, I, I'll explain about that more later. So the second step um, is administering uh, devices um, and managing these devices, but also the apps on it. And the third step is protecting uh, your company resources, so the data you have. So we'll go over all these three steps. Um, but first. Uh, let's talk about remote access to app uh, because the most important step is that we uh, start uh, with a single sign on so that we make access possible uh, from remote to applications and let's start with identity and uh, that identity is being administered in Microsoft Azure AD. Um, so with that, um, you uh, you sign on eh, for applications which are connected to Azure ID, and uh, you sign on once eh, if you would like to, so that the user doesn't have to sign on eh, again and again. And you do this for more applications than Microsoft 365. You also do it for other cloud applications people work with. And on average, organizations have about 180 cloud applications, and this number is growing. 
So we have pre-configured uh, integrations uh, with Azure ID for the app gallery um, for 3,300 uh, applications. And because of this, you can configure a single sign-on with a cloud application within seconds. So now that um, users are, uh, can verify and sign on with these applications, it makes it really easy for them uh, to access it. But the step after that is to configure multi-factor authentication. And while well, this might seem very basic, um, a lot of organizations, for a lot of organizations, um, uh, they do not have this configured for every type of user yet. And enabling MFA and multi-factor authentication does prevent 99.9% .9 of all attempts to steal your identity. And the most used uh, factor app for the multi-factor authentication is the Microsoft Authenticator mobile app. And we really recommend this because it's the most flexible, uh, uh, easiest and most cost-effective solution. And the second factor it uses uh, is that it asks you to confirm uh, on the mobile app and it also supports biometrics like the face and the touch ID. So it also minimizes IT impact because um, we enable, uh, we have, have portals for registration, for password resets in case users lost, lose their password. Now, having deployed this, eh, having MFA also enables you to configure conditional access. So for example, you can request users to authenticate eh, for a second time via this alternative method if they're outside of your corporate network or if they are accessing the resource from a device uh, which is new. Um, so hereby you minimize user impact because you only ask them to do this in um, uh, yeah, the least possible uh, number of um, uh, applications. Now, let's have a look at the second one, managing apps and devices. Um, first, we'll look at implementing and administering applications and virtual desktops and protecting uh, the company data. And next, we'll look at how you um, um, deploy these applications and administer it on your devices. So let's start at managing devices. Um, so big challenge is to manage all your devices uh, from one single interface uh, because companies also have many devices in place. Uh, and many platforms like PC, Mac, iOS, and Android. And we have developed the Microsoft Endpoint Manager to do this from, inter from one interface uh, and also um, uh, take into account on-premise applications via uh, the Microsoft Configuration Manager. Now, other point is deploying devices. Because today, when we have to restrict travel movements, uh, the traditional process of going to IT picking up your laptop uh, and having IT uh, install an image on that laptop no longer works. What you can do with Microsoft Autopilot, for example, is dropship a device to an employee um, and have that employee configure that device within minutes to Microsoft Autopilot. So there is a really no, uh, it's a zero touch process for rolling out uh, these laptops. Um, now let's look at not at managing the device, but managing applications on the device itself by a mobile device management, and then the entire device is managed. This is perfect, for example, uh, with um, uh, company-owned devices or mobile application management. And this is perfect for companies who have a bring your own device policy. Because with mobile application management, you uh, administer just certain apps. Um, and other apps which are private are not touched. Um, and um, also at the background, you can apply uh, the Intune uh, uh, policies. For example, one policy can be that users are not allowed to copy data from corporate apps to private apps. So uh, your data stays secure. Now let's look at the second point, protecting corporate resources. Um, there are a couple of ways to do that, a couple of perspectives. One is your endpoint, uh, one is protecting your data and apps where people collaborate. The other one is protecting the data in cloud apps and the other one is protecting against phishing and malware attacks. And I'll go over all of them quickly. So here's a great example of how we integrate the security functionalities in all the applications in the Microsoft 365 productivity suite. Um, here you see that sensitive data is being shared in Microsoft Teams. Um, a couple of actions are possible. Here the organization chose to flag the data 
uh, make the user aware and give them a reason why they're sharing this data. So it can be a sensitive project, but it can also be a PII data like a, um, a service number. Now the second one is protecting data in cloud apps because people use uh, multiple cloud apps yeah, for Microsoft and not for Microsoft. And you can add sensitivity labels to documents, uh, which also which apply to every cloud that you use your document in. Uh, so, for example, these sensitivity labels can restrict what you can do with the document. Yeah? Uh, maybe within some cloud environment, you cannot download it. Or if it goes to another cloud environment where you don't want it to go, you can restrict access. Finally, protect against phishing and malware attacks. Um, so that is done with safe links, for example. Safe links is a way that if you click on the link in Microsoft Teams uh, or in Outlook, for example, it checks if the links it checks if the link is safe and with safe attachments when, when you get an email the attachment is opened in a safe and contained environment and scanned of course now the last step is protecting your the endpoints itself uh, and that is done um, with um, uh, microsoft defender microsoft defender is now available for all platforms so windows android and ios um, and it offers you advanced security both on the client and in the cloud uh, it looks at antivirus, for example, malware. Um, it looks at uh, reputation analysis. It scans the memory, uh, looks at uh, the behavior, uh, guards the network, um, and also scans for different types of malware. So I've given you a couple of examples here uh, of lessons learned of what you should do to secure uh, your remote workplace. Um, and I think that many organizations are now in this phase uh, asking themselves what they can do. Um, it is a relevant phase now uh, because in the months before it was a crisis mode, like every company had to enable their remote, their workforce to work remote. Now we are looking at how we can optimize uh, the security, the compliance and the privacy of our company data in a world where everybody works remote. So these are just a couple of steps to, to consider. They are summarized um and we'll uh, send you these slides after uh, the webinar so you have can have a look at it yourself as well thank you very much for your attention thank you remco um i've got one question uh, remco like if if you could give one advice to customers who are already purchase the Microsoft 365 suite. Um, yeah. what, what would you recommend to take as a first step to uh, review their current uh, strategy? Okay, so first what's good to realize is that in the Microsoft 365 productivity suite, there are a lot of possibilities to manage your security, privacy and compliance. And a lot of people are not aware what is in the suite and actually purchase point solutions eh, to accomplish the same what's already in your suite. So first tip is check what you bought um, and if you can use that. But also uh, we have made that easier for you and we offer you eh, the Microsoft Secure Score. And with that Secure Score, uh, it's a really easy way for you to from the Microsoft Describe admin portal eh, to scan your security posture. Uh, eh, where can you improve? and also help you to make decisions because uh, there are a lot of actions you can take, but you want to take the actions with the highest impact first. So those analysis is offered uh, by the Microsoft 365 Secure Score. So review that and check what you want because it's a lot. Thank you. Thank you, Remco. Um, if people have questions, uh, you can put them in the Q&A. Um, and now we will uh, see Ruben Spruit from Nutanix. Um, let me see if he, yes, there yeah. he is. <laughs> uh, thank you, Ruben. I will uh, give you the word. <laughs> great, great. Stages, mein Groot. All good uh, afternoon. Goedemiddag in Dutch. So we learned some Dutch as well for the non-Dutch uh, audience. Uh, indeed, my name is Ruben. I'm a technologist and I'm passionate about end-user computing. And uh, thanks uh, Workspace 365 for the stage to talk about, well, new way of work um, with uh, classic apps and uh, securing the workspace combined. So yeah, good, uh, great topic. And uh, let's get started with that. Um, here we go, yes. So securing the new way of working. Uh, as Remco mentioned, uh, and I, there's no need to 
um, repeat that story like we all know uh, what's happening right now. So yeah, it is a new way of working for many of us, but also for many of us, this is like what we've done for a long time, including myself. I used to work from home for for a long time and yeah, helping customers to support new way to support um, remote um, uh, remote work, uh, work from here um, type of uh, deployments. As a technologist, I'm focused on end user computing. Um, passionate about that for uh, for a long time and still passionate about that, especially in 2020, because end user computing um, yeah, is uh, it's, it's great to be part of the end user computing uh, industry, especially these days where like when you look at Zoom and Teams and uh, access to apps and data is like crucial to get work done. So why why is like securing the um, the workspace so important? Well, if you summarize like just the news and the news hits every day about security, identity theft, data theft, data leakage, um, just security in general. This is like sort of the summary of that. So put security in the agenda be before it becomes the agenda, before you will hit like CNN.com or any news site like, hey, a breach happened at customer XYZ. So it is extremely important. And security is an, um, an, an yeah, I would say an umbrella term which encompasses many different things as Remco also, uh, also explained. Why is that important? Because every company has at least one person that clicks on everything or clicks on anything, both both apply. That is the reality. So the weakest link is me, is you, is us, our consumers, business consumers. Um, and that's the that's the reality. How can we sort of, um, I would say, solve it? And of course, there are products and solutions uh, targeted for that. And Remco and others will, uh, will tell, uh, share in more insights about that. I will do as well. But before before that step, before like that second step, um, I think it's important to understand this uh, this item as well. If we just focus on security, we end up with less security. And why? Because for security, we most focus on user experience. If it's so super secure, but so extreme complex with a shitty user experience, then shit hits the van. And people, business consumers, you, me, uh, us, we will find other ways to make it less complex with maybe better user experience, but also less secure. So with for security, we must focus on user experience. And that's sort of like the main theme uh, for, for this. And every vendor will say, well, we, we deliver a great user experience. No vendor will say we deliver a shitty user experience. None will say. But I really would challenge you to, um, or challenge me and challenge the vendors in this space if they are really like super simple, consumer simple to use. And if not, well, maybe it's good to like continue the, the search for uh, better, uh, more simpler solutions in that, uh, in that realm. So lessons uh, I, I want to share. So lessons learned and how to improve in 2021 is complexity is the enemy of security. So hiding complexity and making sure that the solution is consumer simple in my opinion, is a key element. Like my background is uh, technology, solution design, solution architect, CTO for a couple of startups. And it's really a an, um, strength and superpower if the solution is simple by design, which sounds simple, but again, challenge, challenge the vendors, challenge the solution, and also ask yourself, is this really as simple as it can, it can be? And simple is not weak, simple is strong. As Remco mentioned, also like the, the role of IDP, identity providers, is super important. Um, it makes sure that uh, different apps are integrated well with a seamless like user experience around single sign-on, but also passwordless and two-factor authentication with multiple factor, like multiple um, platforms to support that is a fundamental element um, in the modern workspace, not only in 2021, but 2020, um, and the past years and the upcoming years, a fundamental uh, part. Also, communication and training sounds fluffy. Um, is not fluffy uh, at all. It's super important so that people are aware of the risks uh, and how to handle these type of things. And that's uh, attached to super, like uh, cyber hygiene. And that's like uh, cyber hygiene is like putting a seatbelt on. People need to understand that it's not a good thing to use 
single passwords all over the place to have it's better to use like pass passwordless or two-factor authentication with different passwords and so on patch systems don't use basic passwords if passwords are required like these type of like hygiene on many 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 levels in the it organization is like still like the majority of issues today are attached to cyber hygiene then the other topic is zero trust network segmentation isolation fundamental element as well and also from cloud first to cloud smart approach many organizations are like okay, cloud first cloud 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 but that is i would say as dumb as stupid as doing nothing because it's it's important to st stand still investigate what the use case is investigate what the business case is investigate like the complete um, holistic view and uh, paint that picture before you make any move to stay on-prem to go to public cloud to build a hybrid solar scenario so cloud first i would say don't be a lemming cloud first doesn't mean cloud only and therefore i believe there are many many examples where a hybrid cloud approach makes a lot of sense and ask yourself where's my data uh, that's a key element in that from cloud first to cloud smart approach a uh, traditional VPN is no go. You don't want to open uh, from maybe from an untrusted endpoint device like a full network pipe to the uh, corporate data center. So there are many better solutions to do so. Um, no data on the endpoint is great because then you don't need to worry about data on the endpoint. That's where virtual applications and virtual desktops, so VDI and desktop as a service kicks in. I will talk about that and demonstrate that in, uh, in a couple of seconds from now. And also run any Windows application in a browser. Every device has a browser. Why not use a browser to access all data, SaaS, mobile um, data itself, but also Windows applications out of the browser? And that's like welcome to, uh, I would say, my uh, my world. Uh, welcome to to Frame. Frame is part of Nutanix, and Frame in essence is like uh, a cloud platform. So it's a service we operate with a focus to deliver Windows apps and desktops to everyone by using a browser. So. Frame is a service, that's a platform we operate. Uh, that's the control plane, the broker, a um, little bit technical words, but that's the service we operate. And the broker, uh, the control plane, is communicating with um, resources in Azure or in Amazon or Google, so public cloud, or in an on-premises environment. And these re resources, these workers, these workload machines are responsible to execute the application. And what it means is that without installing anything on your endpoint, you're able to run, I would say, any Windows application. And I will show that in uh, in a minute or so. What it means is that it's super simple, like fire up HTML5 browser, uh, secure login using Azure AD or any other like modern identity provider and access apps um, or desktops and apps uh, like with, uh, with a couple of clicks, including high-end graphics applications, um, like one of the taglines in Frame is run any application in a browser. In this case, you see here a screenshot of Adobe, uh, of uh, Autodesk Inventor. That's a high-end graphics application. It requires a workstation type machine, which can run in Amazon, Azure, Google, so public cloud, or in an on-premises environment to support these type of workloads. But it can also be maybe a Silverlight application or Office Productivity or like any application running in a browser without installing anything on that machine. So no clients, no agent, no receiver, no plugin on that browser is required. And since it's a platform, it's always getting better. Uh, there are there's an, a weekly or bi-weekly update cycle on, on our side to add features, to add functionality to the platform. And that's been delivered like uh, with, a, with a clip, a finger clip. So that's what you get with running a service. And to see that in action, the best thing is to, well, just demonstrate that. And what you will see is Workspace 365 combined with Frame in action. So uh, let me just go to my demo here. So this is Workspace 365. I logged in with Azure AD and I clicked on, on the Autodesk Inventor application, which I added uh, to the Workspace 365 portal, portal. With the same identity provider, I'm able to access that application no client, no agent, no plugin installed. Click on the application and run the application. And now this application is being displayed on my endpoint, in this case a Mac, but it can be any device with a browser. And the frame remote protocol is responsible for displaying this information. Uh, the complete control plane is responsible for the broker, for secure gateway, 
um, clientless VPN, uh, making sure that data is centralized, uh, easy access to OneDrive, Dropbox, Box, Google Drive, uh, microphone support, clipboard support, printer support, like all the things you need to run apps like Inventor, but any application, any Windows application. And that's what you see here. So you see eight Windows applications, which are not SASified. There are no web versions of that. Um, but you want to integrate these apps into Workspace 365. And that's what you see here. Um, I can imagine that um, uh, you want to see this in action yourself. Uh, so seeing is believing. Um, I already uh, demonstrated one element of, uh, of frame, run any application in the browser. But maybe you want to be hands on with that as well. And there are two different uh, modes, two different options for, for that. The first one is a 12 hour test drive where you can onboard your own app and see how that works in a browser. Or if you need more time or maybe some other um, requirements, you can also sign up for a 30 day trial, uh, attach your uh, public cloud subscription or use an on-prem Nutanix environment uh, for the infrastructure workload machines and uh, spend like 30 days uh, with, uh, with frame in, in action. So with that, um, I would say big thanks for, for listening. Uh, see if there are any questions on uh, on Mark's uh, side. And uh, yeah, thanks for listening. Thank you, Ruben. Um, yeah. I've got one question. Like um, when uh, the Netherlands shut down or, or other countries shut down, did you see like uh, did you see like a, a spike in usage of frame? Oh yeah, yeah, especially in the um, beginning of the year, um, I believe it was like 10x the amount of uh, like uh, like requests we got. Um, nowadays, it's still like um, uh, like much higher than uh, like like a year ago, for instance. Uh, but like this big surge, uh, I think Remco mentioned as well with with uh, with Teams, and I've seen it the same with Zoom. That big surge ha uh, did happen, uh, big time. Uh, now it's more like normalized, but still higher than uh, than quote normal. And that will not go away. Like the, we now all know that, yes, there are big downsides of like being in lockdown and working from home, but there are also great upsides of that. Um, and like when I just look around with my buddies, my friends, uh, peers around me, they all, well, not all, but like I would say 80% of them would say like, hey, yeah, I like two days a week working from home. But then the question is, okay, how can I deliver the apps and desktops in different formats to uh, remote users in a secure way and not like in a sort of panic mode way in the uh, which which happened in the earlier uh, earlier uh, months of uh, of this year so people really yeah. scratched their head okay how can i make uh, this remote work part of my um, yeah my 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 solution in 2021 and like the years to come yeah great well thank you ruben You're welcome and um, the next speaker uh, we have up is uh, Ari. He's from Arion, an MSP in the Netherlands. And I will get him on the screen. <laughs> yes, here he is. So thank you, Ruben and uh, Ari, the floor is yours. Okay. Hello, my name is Ari van der Del. I'm product manager and partner manager at Aeon. I'm almost working for 40 years in the real estate business for uh, the ICT for real estate business. And uh, my uh, employee, my, uh, my my organization is Aeon. Uh, Aeon is a European uh, organization which uh, concentrates on ICT solution for real estate and uh, our mother organization is uh, in the Germany and we have also or, uh, com uh, companies in the Netherlands, in the France, in the UK, in, uh, in the Nordics and we're working in uh, Austria and uh, Switzerland at this moment. So in the Europe we're the greatest uh, organization for ICT for real estate. What I'd like to talk you uh, uh, today um, is uh, how to um, ensure your data is safe uh, besides your production data. Since the uh, introduction of the GDBR or the AVG, as we say in Dutch, um, there are some new rules um, which make uh, things rather complicated. 
because uh, when you see the in in a production situation uh, the production database is the only database that may contain real life data. So in our business with uh, housing companies and uh, real estate uh, companies, there's a lot of data of tenants and uh, but it's not allowed for anyone to see them. And uh, some other thing, um, our customers will, will use the a copy, uh, we're, we're used to use a copy of the database just to uh, testing new functionality, testing new reports, uh, train their own people. And it's not allowed anymore to uh, do that on the real life data. So there, we had to find a way to um, uh, uh, solve this for our customers. And um, we did it uh, in the in the next way. We call it the data factory. We developed it with one of our partners. And it just worked like this. Um, we have the uh, production uh, databases. Let's say um, we uh, make a, a copy to them to, to mask them. Uh, and that can be just a standard masking or there can be a special configuration for a special customer needs or something of, for special um, uh, products like our own uh, ERP for housing companies. And after that, you have a masked uh, database which you can copy for training for the OTAP street or for uh, uh, testing uh, something. Um, uh, but but there's there's more to that because um, we just we don't just um, uh, get a name and set uh, set it some uh, different letters on it or get an address and uh, put an under just some X's or Y's or letters on it. Uh, no, uh, there's there's a mechanism so that we can uh, take names from another place and put them in the names for, for the original and, and the same with addresses but we ensure that the uh, that the postal codes will um, uh, connect to the address and the same with birth date so we can ensure that um, the birth date is not the same but will be in the, in, in, in the same year as the initial date because uh, for testing and for reporting, it's 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 uh, very um, important uh, to have real uh, results and not fake results. So there's all kind of rules uh, which we use to uh, mask the data. And to show you um, an example, we have here a family, uh, Mrs. Mrs. Peterson and Taimo and married the children. Well, when we are masking this, uh, something like this will happen. So uh, the names will change, but, but it will still be real names. And we put some uh, 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 recognizing to it, it's mask data. So you can see if you use this data, it's mask data. Um, the ages will stay the same, but the addresses will change, but it, it can be changed into the same neighborhood. So uh, it, it's possible to make your reports again and and they are correct. Um, the emails, we always change it to something else or we, we get them away. Uh, and when we change them, we change them with, with a su uh, suffix uh, that that's, uh, is the, it's the domain of the organization itself. So it's uh, at, at areon.nl because when the system uh, during the testing is generating emails, you don't want them to come to the real customers. So that's why we, we do that in that way. Uh, the telephone numbers will change and this will work, will be masked and the contracts will be masked. So that's the uh, first part of the masking process where we uh, ensure that the uh, copy of the database is uh, not recognizable, but you can work with it. And when there is other, are there other system uh, uh, connected to the uh, first database, we also can use the same rules on it. So there is for the total application landscape, there's one uh, mask situation. 
Uh, another thing I'd like to mention is when I, uh, for the first time, are uh, um, masking the data and Mr. Peterson will become Mr. Janssen, the second time I do it, uh, uh, there will be the same results, so uh, the testing scripts can always be always be the same. Um, if you want to change them, we just change. You can just change the config uh, files, and there will be other names. But we can ensure that every time you're masking data, the results will be the same. Well, that's about the data, but there's also something about the documents. Because our customers, but also many customers in the healthcare or other situation, have many documents um, uh, scanned with uh, information about people. Uh, say the, the uh, ID number, we call it in the Dutch the BSN number, the social, the social security numbers, uh, copies from uh, IDs, or all kinds of things. Well, we have managed to make a system where we can just in in uh, pro in, in, in in processes in batches uh, check all those documents and uh, make them uh, uh, masked for the um, data you you like to mask. The mostly in the in our in our customer side, the the the, so the housing companies. Uh, they choose to, um, uh, to mask the social security number, they choose to mask the incomes, and they choose to mask the IDs or the copies of the uh, IDs. And we can do it in two ways. So uh, the first way is to just get all your old documents and scan them and mask them. And the second way is um, because documents will come in and will come in, so we can uh, also get the new documents at the right time and mask them at that moment. So uh, the, the, the project is, is mainly contained out of two parts. The first, thing, uh, the first part is uh, mask all the old documents and the second part is uh, period, period uh, each period you want to mask the new documents. And th this is why uh, this is say the result. So this is the document before masking, and this is the, this is the document after masking. And um, well, some, uh, some things about better in the individual documents, you can add your own dictionary. So uh, just say which which um, uh, data you want to be masked, and we can uh, manage it for you. And there's also a monitoring where you can see I've had these documents, but uh, say this, this this ten or five I couldn't mask because I uh, I wasn't able to read uh, the document. So after that, you're able to safely share your data. And um, we've got an offer for you for this. So if you want to try this, just um, send an email to me and we can uh, get a, a, a free test with say 25 or 50 documents you send in to us and we'll, we'll mask them for you and you can see the result. Well, it will cost you not, nothing, but you can see uh, what we can do to help you protect your data. So what are the results? Well, something about compliance, I won't get uh, further into it. Uh, it's reliable data to, uh, to test with, and at the end there's a cost reduction, which you, you, can, faster, uh, you can test faster, uh, there's no risk, and um, your product development will be re reliable. So that's for now. I don't know if there are any questions, but if you uh, like to try one of these products, just uh, send me a mail and I, I, can, I can help you. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, Ari. I have uh, one question. Um, are the customers that uh, are new to Ariel, are they aware, uh, because the GDPR is there for quite a while now, are they aware that they should mask uh, all their documents and also the testing environments? No, they're not aware of it, but we try to make uh, them aware of it. Just um, uh, some months ago, because 
uh, we, we send them a, a message, a letter, because sometimes our service desk want to look in the, in the database just to help them uh, uh, fix some uh, problem or some questions. And we uh, said to our customers, it, it's for us not allowed to come in your production database. So we uh, want you to have a uh, mask database where our, where our people can help you uh, with your questions. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Ari. <coughs> I think it's uh, an important subject and I think it was like one of the subjects that, uh, yeah, a lot of IT managers might be unfamiliar with yet, uh, that those rules apply to those uh, testing environments as well. So thank you, Ari. Um, the next speaker is uh, Casimir from SmartLocker, uh, also one of the organizers of the event. Um, SmartLocker is an email security tool and uh, Casimir will share uh, what uh, tips he has uh, learned in 2020. So uh, take it away, Casimir. Thank you, Mark, for the, for the nice introduction. Uh, thank you all for tuning in today in this, uh, this nice event. And thank you already, guys. Uh, I already learned a lot, actually. So that is, uh, that is nice. Uh, the question I'm asking today, how secure email will remain your biggest security asset in 2021? Uh, for the people who don't know me, uh, I'm Casimir. I'm uh, 31. I live in the most beautiful capital of the world. And um, I have a mission. And uh, the mission, that same mission I share with my company, SmartLocker, and that mission is to fight data leaks. And um, yeah, when you think of email security, I'm, I'm, I'm wondering, I'm going to ask you a question. Uh, what is the first word that pops to your mind when you think of email security? Just give you a couple of seconds to think about it. Email security. Email security, the first answer I normally get, it's like email security is a hassle. Cause it's just, it's, it's, it's not good. It's unuser friendly. Uh, it, it, it brings annoyment. Uh, it's annoying. And, and to be honest, when I started to work for SmartLocker two years ago, before that, I thought email security is just a hassle. It's not nice. It's not effective. It's uh, user unfriendly. Uh, guess what? After two years of working uh, in this company, I can say it can be user friendly and it can be effective. Uh, so that's, uh, that's a good thing. But apart from the user friendliness, there's another important factor. And uh, yeah, the speakers before me already told you, but it's all about awareness. So I think the, the most data leaks don't exist or cyber attacks, they actually, they are there because of a lack of awareness. And uh, I want to ask you another question. Uh, do you guys like, let's say a, a couple of beers or a couple of wines in the weekend? I feel like normally the answer is yes. Uh, I like a couple of beers in the weekend. And the problem is then, uh, let's say it's Friday afternoon and it's 4 p.m. And I'm already thinking which friend is coming over tonight? What beers am I going to get him? The problem is I'm still working. And I'm going to send out an email and I'm going to send that to 30 people and it is a sensitive email. I'm sending it out and there you have it. Massive data leak. That is the problem. So the problem always lays in the human error and that's why I'm going to repeat and repeat and repeat that awareness is the key to success in 2021. Um, what were the three biggest causes of data leaks in 2020? Were those insider threats? With other words, was it your own? employee your own colleague that was the risk uh, maybe it were the, the weak passwords or was it malware insider threats and then specifically phishing has been a big problem uh, phishing always has been has been a big problem but it's only increasing and increasing uh, we all know it uh, congratulations you won hundred thousand euros because your number x visiting this website um, i know that's fake you know it's phishing, but does your employee know that? Does your colleague know that? Um, we have to make these colleagues and employees aware. You can it in different ways. You can do that by trainings. You can use software to make your colleagues aware, but there's different ways and that, that, that awareness is super important. Uh, another question, how did the number of phishing emails you receive at work change since Corona? Well, 47 of the people said, it remained about the same. But shockingly, 25% said, which is a quarter of the whole group, said it has increased. So phishing was already a big problem, but since Corona arrived, um, 
it, it increased a lot. So it's getting more and more, it's becoming more and more dangerous. What did we learn in 2020? Uh, we already asked this question, but I'm going to ask it again. And uh, how can we improve 2020? Well, we've been already talking about multi-factor authentication, but one factor authentication is not enough anymore. We need to have a password, but we also need a device. Two-factor authentication means literally, what do you know and what do you have? So you know your password and you have a mobile device on which you can receive an SMS code or something, uh, but it's important that we're using multi-factor authentication. Secondly, please encrypt your data. And don't encrypt your data, that's not sensitive, but encrypt the data that is needed to encrypt. Um, and the, the most important thing again is, is awareness. And awareness you can gain by trainings. Uh, you can do it in different ways. I spoke with a hospital uh, lately and they told me that they have different post-its on every toilet in the hospital uh, telling their colleagues, be aware of these kind of things. That's another uh, option. Uh, what we do at Smart Locker, uh, we have this thing when we, uh, not, when we don't lock our screen, you have to do push-ups. So uh, one of my diary colleagues is very buffed, but that's not because he's training a lot in the gym. He's just not locking his screen a lot. So, so that's, uh, that's something I wouldn't recommend, uh, but let's keep it sort of sharp here. So again, 2021 will remain a year where we will focus on awareness as data will become more valuable to cyber criminals. How are we going to improve that awareness? Well, I would recommend you to use software that is going to give you notifications. So for instance, this email here, I'm going to send to uh, Sarah Smith. My software is going to tell me, hey, Sarah Smith is not your colleague. So we're going to give you a notification or I'm going to attach a file, let's say a medical file, and the system already knows, hey, that sensitive information. We're going to encrypt that with two-factor authentication. So what we're doing here, we're taking out the thinking for your employee, and we're just doing the thinking for him or her. And that is going to take out the human error. We can take that one step further. So apart from only just reading, let's say, one trigger word or one thing in a document or in the body of the email, we can actually have a robot, make that robot smarter and smarter. And then the robot is going to accompany me at 4 p.m. on a Friday afternoon and it's going to check me. Hey, I think Casimir is not uh, not really uh, not really taking note there. Uh, he's going to send out a sensitive email. He's going to send it to 30. Let's make it secure. So in case he's already thinking of the weekend, we at least secured it and we don't have a day leak. Then another very good option is the s and pay relay service. Um, I'm, I'm sure most of us, most of you guys are pretty with uh, extensive technical knowledge, but I always explain this. What is a relay server? It's pretty much a traffic controller. Traffic control is always there. So it doesn't matter if your employee is sending out an email from the mobile phone, from a tablet, from Google or from Microsoft, it doesn't matter. The traffic controller is always going to read with you. How sensitive is the data? So let's say it's my birthday and I'm going to invite everyone because the birthday cake is ready. The traffic controller is going to say, yeah, we let we, we let that through without authentication. But if the traffic controller sees that it's medical uh, sensitive information, he will actually encrypt that with two-factor authentication. So again, I'm taking out the thinking and I'm doing the thinking for you. So Important, sending securely is important. So we all want to be sure that we as a company, you as a company, don't have any data leaks. But apart from that, aside of that, it's also important that you receive securely. You want to also give your client or your customer the chance to fight data leaks with you. So you were going to give, you want to give them an option to do that all in the right way. So you could send them a, a safe upload request. You can offer portals. At least you're saying to them, hey, I want to take care not only of my own data, but also of yours. Uh, to conclude, as I already said a couple of times, uh, Smart Locker is fighting data leaks. And what I would recommend to all of you, let's change that employee from a security weakness into your biggest security defense. And you can do that by giving trainings, but what's probably easier is to get the right software and take out the human error. Thank you. Thank you, Kashmir. 
Because we on LinkedIn, you also uh, share a lot of um, examples of companies who uh, had a data leak. Um, do you think uh, those companies like were they too late in protecting their data? Like, is it? Do you see it with customers that they first have to get an error in order to uh, take a look at the security measurements? Yeah, yeah. I feel I feel that's how we all. Um... Yeah, handle our lives, you know, uh, I, I think um, my friend would not have a, a fire alarm until he had a fire. Uh, yeah, I mean, we have to get health insurance, but I always say you can better just be safe than sorry. And um, yeah, what we see is that some some organizations, we all know it's important, but yeah, we didn't get the right tools or didn't get the right protection. And then the data leak exists. And actually when it happened, you only realize how how bad it is for your for for your image. and. Um, and and also for the people that have their sensitive information on the streets. So yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, and I think it's good um, to know that also you can use uh, Smart Locker uh, with Workspace 365. Um, so that's a great uh, combination to secure your digital workspace. Definitely. Thank you, Casimir. You're welcome. Um, the next speaker is uh, Floris. He's from Workspace 365. He's our solution consultant. And he will uh, now share his screen. And his, uh, yes, there is the screen. And now we still need Floris. There he is. Yes. <clears throat> Hello, everybody. And uh, thank you, Mark, for the introduction. And uh, all the other guys, of course, for uh, very clear uh, information. Thank you. And uh, of course, my name is uh, Floris van der Laar and I'm a solution consultant at Workspace 365. And um, yeah, as a software solution uh, a consultant, I can inform you about, uh, about the Workspace uh, solution, uh, but today, today I'm not. Uh, so uh, please feel free to reach out if you have any questions, of course. Um, but for, I want to share a story uh, with you. And um, yeah, as IT managers, we all understand that security is, is very important uh, because that's also why we're all here today. Uh, but is the management team uh, of your organization also aware of this? Um, and is IT the only, who's, only one who's responsible for security? So a few years ago, I was uh, working for a managed service provider and I was responsible for uh, advising a construction company uh, in the Netherlands about security. And uh, I was uh, asked about this uh, IT policy and, uh, and the IT manager, let's call him John. <laughs> he discovered that there were uh, still too little awareness within this organization about security. And as uh, Kazimir net uh, also uh, told, awareness is, is pretty important, of course. Uh, but yeah, John didn't know um, how to get this uh, awareness uh, uh, to his uh, management team. And uh, as, all, as you all, uh, he has attended uh, a lot of webinars and uh, he had a lot of knowledge about uh, yeah, how to get a secure workplace. Uh, but he wasn't, uh, uh, um, he, he didn't have the awareness of the management team. And uh, yeah, because uh, security is of course more than just the right technology. So uh, I sat down with this uh, IT manager, uh, John, and we came up with the idea to invite uh, uh, people from other departments to this meeting and then uh, create common ground. And, uh, uh, d d d but how? Yes, um, yeah, we need to find uh, uh, an, and, and discover a potential risk that is relevant for this organization. Um, uh, during uh, a meeting we uh, organized and we found out that, for example, in this, uh, in this organization, they had contracts that went uh, to customers, but these customers of these contracts weren't properly, properly checked. And um, yes, of course, uh, what, what does this mean for this organization? It meant uh, uh, that this model contract they use uh, were not uh, according to the GDPR legislation. And um, uh, in case of a data breach uh, 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 or, or there was <clears throat> something went wrong, um, um, the, 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 the customers had the opportunity to get out of the, uh, under this contract. So they found a common ground and that uh, relevant risk for this organization created the awareness they needed for their management team. 
So uh, John he put all this information uh, uh, in a presentation and he and he gave it to one of his managers and they uh, and, and it was presented in the management team and suddenly this uh, topic was one of the uh, agenda topics uh, of the next meeting. So uh, and why is this now important? Because we need to find uh, uh, the connection to the business goals and uh, of course uh, security uh, should connect with them. Uh, it, it should play an important role. Uh, it's not just only security, of course. Well, this, this story took place uh, years ago, but uh, uh, many organizations who still uh, think that security is an IT party. And uh, it should not uh, uh, be only the technical measurement, as been mentioned before. Also, the awareness is, is, is very important. Um, so how do we connect to these business goals? Because we want to accomplish something. And of course, uh, the goals we need to accomplish with security is to guarantee business continuity. We prevent uh, security breaches and reduce the operational and business risk. And uh, of course, many recognize yourself within John, I think. And uh, security is a topic that should be uh, uh, on the agenda of management. Uh, for example, uh, uh, information security, uh, as we uh, want to prevent uh, uh, that the uh, uh, business continuity is not guaranteed anymore, uh, we need to re uh, review uh, annually this security and uh, uh, um, we have to uh, um, revis revisit it, that um, re revise it uh, and uh, the practical experience and the technology. So first of all, we have to create an information security policy. And, uh, and when we have this uh, security policy, we then create uh, we know what what we're going to protect uh, of course this can be contracts or intellectual properties uh, identity as mentioned before and um, <clears throat> uh, uh, and then we can of course if we can connect it to the business goals then we can take the first steps to uh, the security so first of all we have to create the connection to the business goals and after that if we know that we can create the technical steps um, um, like a single sign-on, as mentioned before, um, but also one thing that's very important is the one identity, and uh, we can create, uh, we can use an uh, uh, one single uh, identity provider, and uh, of course then uh, uh, connect to uh, these environments by single sign-on. Um, also, an, a major tip is to connect uh, the uh, identity provider uh, for uh, to the HR systems. So the uh, HR is responsible for creating the accounts, and that also uh, um, gives you the opportunity to disable and enable uh, accounts within your corporation. And with one click, you can uh, uh, di uh, uh, Disable the, or, uh, the access to the uh, to the information with your company. So, and as last but not least, of course, uh, increase awareness within your organization because your um, uh, employees are uh, should be aware of the fact that they uh, don't open unwanted emails or uh, click on uh, unsafe links. So I recapped uh, all these uh, tips, of course, which I, um, I mentioned. Uh, uh, please invi uh, invite your people from multiple departments because uh, they can help you to create the awareness of, uh, of the management. And this cover also relevant risk uh, uh, for your organization, uh, discover them. Uh, so you can also uh, uh, create this awareness of your management team. And uh, of course, present them then uh, in the, in, uh, to your management. Uh, and after that, you can create your information security policy. Uh, and the last step is, of course, then uh, to protect your crown jewels uh, and get some uh, some help, of course, from uh, from external to make this uh, make this happen. So that was my uh, my story. I hope um, uh, I don't, I'm not sure if there are any questions. <laughs> I, do, I don't see answers in the uh, <laughs> questions in the chat. <laughs> okay, great. Um, but maybe you can uh, put back one slide. Of course. Mm -hmm. um, 
Yeah, so I think it's uh, good for people to uh, to realize that, um, like as mentioned uh, also by Kasimir, uh, mostly people think about security at the moment uh, when something bad happens. Um, so what yes. Floris uh, tries to make sure uh, is that you place security on the agenda uh, before something happens. So. Uh, like Ruben and Remco told with the spike of uh, the pandemic, uh, people started working from home and people were aware of the security uh, threats. Uh, and we have seen an increase in cyber attacks since then. So it's good to realize that, uh, well, cyber criminals are getting smarter and smarter. Uh, so you should have solutions which are also uh, continuously updating to stay up to date on the latest uh, security uh, trends and options. Um, so I think um, that was the event. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to put them in the chat. Um, and if you don't have any questions, we will send a recording of the event to all of you. Uh, I want to thank uh, all the speakers, so Remco, uh, Ruben, Kashimir, Ari and Flores, of course, uh, for presenting. Uh, hopefully everybody who attended picked up some new things which triggers them to think about their own security uh, policy. We will share all the presentations and a short summary of the sessions with you uh, and also provide some details for you to learn how you can use uh, either Microsoft Frame, Smart Locker or uh, the services by uh, Arion to uh, secure your digital workplace. So thank you all for tuning in and hopefully we see you next time. Thank you and bye bye.